Hardly Gang, due to our habit of seeing things in our coding sections before we see them in the PowerPoints, some of this is going to seem like review. I don't particularly care about the software development process of planning and organizing a program. Why do I say that? It's important stuff, but this is not a software development, software engineering class. It's a class where we're learning scripting, where we're learning programming. <clears throat> so this is kind of stuff that I want you to read and answer questions about, you know, on the quiz. But I'm not going to ask questions about it in my exams or anything like that. So software development is a process of planning and organizing a program. Basically, you get a request, you analyze, you design, you implement, you integrate, like you install it on the web or on their machine or whatever, and then maintenance. That's called the waterfall model. Kind of like this. But at any step, it may be kicked back up, right? Almost always what happens is, is the customer gets a look at it and then they ask for changes. It's like you have to write it once before somebody can actually imagine what it's supposed to look like. And so while you're testing it, you'll always find problems. And so you have to go back and you have to go back and redesign and keep testing and keep testing and stuff like that. And every time you make a big change, then you have to reintegrate it. And then while you're doing maintenance, you may make bigger changes. Maintenance just means that you're making small changes. You're fixing bugs and stuff like that. But then you get asked for a new feature, right? I'm going to integrate this with such and such database where it didn't do that before. That's a big feature, and you've got to go back up all the way up to the top, right, and design it and analyze it, you know, and then code that. So it's kind of a cyclic thing, and you can tell by the way the errors are going that that's the case. Now this chart shows that for a large software project, you spend a little bit of time analyzing. If you're going to fix a bug in the analysis stage, it's not very expensive. But if there's a fault that makes it all the way through into maintenance, then it costs a lot of money to fix that. Why? Because you've got to redesign it, you've got to re-implement it, you've got to reintegrate it. And so if there's any bug, you want to find it as early as possible. That's why when I suggest testing, you try to test to break your program, not to make it work. Programmers always test to make sure their program works. It's supposed to do something. So you run it and you type in the correct input and woohoo, it worked. But you have to type in the incorrect output input as well. You need to try to break your program. You need to try to figure out if it'll handle multiple different types of data. So, you know, because that's part of the implementation phase is that testing phase when you're testing your own program. And if you work at a large company and on a large project, then you may even have a testing department that helps you do that or between the implementation and the integration phase, just because the sooner those problems can be detected, the better, right? It's far better to fix a problem when it's sitting on your desk than when it's uploaded to the PlayStation App Store, right? So here we go. Text processing, by far the most common application of computing. I don't really know about that, but I guess I'll agree with it. You know, email, sending text messages to each other, web, right? Everything that comes to you via the web is text. Not strictly true, right? Because then you get binary images and stuff like that. Word processing. Did I start the recorder? Yes, I did. Good for me. Looks awfully quiet on the microphone, though. Hello. You can hear me now? I hope so. Somebody complained that the audio... Did anybody find a video where the audio was not audible? All right, good. One class did. And I was sure I had the mic on, so I wasn't sure what was going on with that. Can we bring this closer? All right. So, talking about strings, what is strings? A string is just a series of things that you could type in on a keyboard. It's not numeric data. You can't do math on strings. If you're going to do math, you have to convert the strings into a number. So basically, variables consist of four different things. And this is kind of take, talking about fundamentals of programming logic. I'm going to type all these notes directly into idle instead of keeping notepad and then idle going separately. So I'm going to do file, new, save as... This is lecture three, lecture C, I do believe. 
You don't have to type in the comments and the notes that I'm making. Feel free if you want to. Instead of doing this in front of every line, I'm going to start my comments off with the triple quote. And we'll talk more about what the triple quote really is in a minute. <clears throat> so a variable has four components. It's got a name, it's got a type, it's got a value, and it's got a memory address, right? Because everything in a computer has a memory address, otherwise where is it storing it? You know, is it writing it on the back of the computer? No, right? So it's being stored in memory. We don't care that much about the memory address. And what do I mean by that? We can't find out in this language what memory address a variable is stored at, right? In some languages you can not in this language. So that's not what I consider the most important one in terms of what we're doing. The name of a variable is very important, right? Otherwise we don't know, you know, how to access it. The type is very important and the value is very important. What is type? Type describes the type of data that could be stored in it and the operations that can be used to access the data. So for example, I'm going to end this comment with a quote, 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 or maybe I'll just go up to do run Python shell. Here's a string. Hello. Right. I cannot do A equals A plus 1. What would it mean to add one to hello? Well, what if we wanted to put the number one as the end of the hello string, or like we were going to put somebody's name? We could do that. A is equal to A plus there, right? That works. And then when we print out A, it says hello there. So the operation that is allowed is the plus sign, but the plus sign has to have a string on both sides. Right, it has to have a, a string there and then a string there. You can't add a number to a string without doing some kind of conversion, and that's what this is saying. Type error must be string, not int. So the plus sign is an operator, which means concatenation. I'm going to go and put that as a comment in here. So, for example, the string type holds characters like what you type in from the keyboard, also known as text, usually known as text, and the operators that are allowed are addition, which concatenates two strings, just meaning it joins them, it appends one to the other, concatenation. And then, oddly enough, multiply works as well, but it doesn't do what you might expect. Let me show you. I'm going to come back to the pi, uh, idle shell. Watch what happens if I say print 10 times A. It printed 10 copies of A. So that's not real multiplication, is it? And I'm not even sure what to call it in that context. That could be useful, right? What if you want to make a, a line of 60 dashes? for some reason, right? Print a dash times 60. Boom, we have 60 dashes. That's kind of neat. That's about the only purpose I can see for using that functionality because otherwise, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, that's kind of for the birds. So that's kind of neat. Let's uh, go back and modify our notes saying that concatenation and then we're going to call star repeating. So operations can include things like this. A equals hello. We just did that. A equals A plus space there. This can be shortened. You can also write A plus equals there. That's the same syntax. This is how I'd usually write it. It's shorter, right? 
hopefully you can see that it's shorter. Just like if we were going to add 10 to a value, if we had a variable named x, we could do x is equal to x plus 10, or we could type x plus equals 10, and it means the same thing. I like that better. A lot of people like that better. I had a book, though, that only taught this method, and so whenever I did this the student, or asked quest, quiz questions about it, the students were confused. Hope the book shows that one. Don't remember. So print Bob times 3 would print Bob, Bob, Bob. So that's the string type. There's other types too. There's a numeric type. We were talking about the four components. There's the name and the type, and there's the value and the memory address. I'm going to tab that over to indicate that that's what a type is. Describes the data and the operations that can be used. So the string type holds characters. There's also numeric types, like in the integer. which to abbreviate, to make shorter, we call the int. Those are whole numbers. And then there's a floating point type, which to abbreviate, we call floats. Those are numbers with a decimal point. And inside the computer, those are completely different things. One is not equal to 1.0 inside the computer. If we write a program and ask those two numbers if they're the same, it'll go, yeah, sure. Python is generous with that respect. But inside the computer, those are stored completely different because this has to be broken down into a exponential format. What do I mean by that? If we had 3 and we had 3.0, the second one has to be stored like this. 3 times 10 to the power of 0. Believe it or not, that is the same thing as that. But, well, 3.0 times 10 to the power of 0. You can see that it has to, I'm going to shorten this. You, you may have seen this kind of notation in a science or math class, 3.0e to the 0. This first part has to be stored separately from this part, but they both share the same amount of memory as in a whole number like that. So, completely different data types. However, in this particular language, the uh, inventor of it was pretty careful to make it so that they work seamlessly together. It's not going to behave differently, usually, whether you give it an integer or a floating point number. So, that's why I don't mind using floating point numbers everywhere. I'm going to tab this over because that's what an integer is. I'm going to tab this over because that's what a floating point number is. And I'm going to delete these comments. So, x is equal to 3. Is that an integer or a float? How about y is equal to 0 0.1? Is that an integer or a float? How about z is equal to 3.0? Looks like an int, but it's not. It's a float. And what do I mean? Because our brains think that point zero means it's a whole number. So int and float are numeric data types that represent numbers. They have more operations, right? They don't just have the plus and the multiply, right? So numeric data types have more operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, Division, floor division, and modulus. Did we talk about floor division and modulus last time? Is that a big yes? Yes. Okay, good deal. I think there's one example of using modulus and floor division that I didn't give, and I want to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to end my very long string. All of this is one long string. And I'll show you what I mean. If I did this, T E X T equals all the way up at the top of that. And then I go down here after the quote, 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 and I do print parentheses text like that.
and it breaks. Oh, I think I had an extra set of quote, quote, quotes. One down here at the very bottom. All right, see what happened? It printed the whole dang thing, right? I have one string that contains, you know, several pages of information. So just like you can do this, A is equal to Fred. You can do B is equal to Barney. And then rubble on the next line. But to get that to work, you have to do the triple quotes. To get it to span more than one line, you have to do that. And so, by using the triple quotes as kind of a comment, a multi-line comment field, we're just kind of hacking it. Uh, we're taking advantage of the fact that it's okay to declare a string and not assign it to a value. Right? We didn't have to do this part up at the top in order to get our string to start. It was okay just to do that without it. And so, using it as a comment is fine. You'll see a lot of examples of that. But if you need to, I'm going to get rid of that print text down here. You can also do this to support multi-line data like that. So if I print A like that, it's going to print out Fred. If I print out B like that, it's going to print out Barney and then Rubble on the next line. Like that. So I'm going to add some comments. It's hard to talk about uh, triple quotes in a comment. Let's, let's see if we can do that. A single quote marks a one-line string. Or how about a pair of single quotes? Single or double quotes. Right, you understand what I mean. And then triple quotes. Start or mark a multi-line string. I think I'm going to take off this pair of. You understand that that quotes come in pairs. So single quotes mark a one-line string. Just like this. That's a one-line string. And this is a multi-line string. Honestly, how often do I use this? Usually I only do it for comments. But we can do that. What if we really, really, really wanted Fred to be printed on two strings, but we didn't want to use this triple quote? business to get that to happen. We could use what's known as a line break, a line feed, which more technically is called an escape character, an escape sequence. Let me show you what I mean. If I do this, print, parentheses, quote, iron, backslash in, man, end quote, in parentheses, it's going to print iron on one line and man on the next. And down here, that's what we see. Just like it printed Barney Rubble, right? So we could have declared it either way. We could have printed triple quotes, iron, and then on the next line, man, and then more triple quotes to close it. Or you can embed line feeds there. There's more than one escape sequence. Backslash T stands for tab. It's the other one that you use a lot. And then if a slide comes up about escape sequences, we'll talk more about them still. But I'm going to put a comment to that effect. Backslash n is an escape sequence, meaning new line. Why isn't it called, why is it called an escape sequence? Somebody in the 60s made up that term or something like that. It's because it jumps out of the mode that it was in and switches it to a new mode temporarily. It escapes the mode that it was in. What is that mode? These are just English characters, right? I say I'm a printer. Print I, print R, print O, print N, print, uh-oh, I got a slash. I'm going to behave in a completely different fashion. I'm not going to print what comes next. Instead, I'm going to figure out what that means and do something special. There might be a, a, a page feed character, for example, that kicks out that page from the printer. I think that would be slash L. There might be a tab, a slash T, which would, you know, tab it to the next thing. But slash N means go to the next line. Now that it's gone to the next line, it's done with that escaping, it's back into normal mode. And so it prints out an M and an A and an M.
I just go to that trouble of explaining that so that it hopefully kind of makes sense when you call something an escape sequence. I'm going to mention the other one that uh, you will probably most use most often, and that's slash T for tab. So if I do this, print, quote, one, two, three, slash T, backslash T, four, five, six, it's going to look like this. Right, I just put a tab there. Let's print something else out in the same effect. Print A backslash T B, end quote, in parentheses. See, it lined them up, right, by tab. It looks like it's thinking that a single tab is always eight spaces. And that's okay. I don't even know if that can be changed. If you're trying to print data that's more than eight characters wide, the tabs are going to get messed up. Like if I do this. What's that word that's uh, eight characters wide or more? Uh, how about Oklahoma backslash T USA? It's not going to look good. It's not going to line up with the other ones, right? Because this one was longer than the space allowed. So it jumped to the next tab, just like a typewriter, right? None of y'all use typewriters. <laughs> You're all too young. Yeah, yeah, we use keyboards, but and we hit tab on the on the, you know on word processing programs. You are familiar with the idea. Yeah. Let's see. What am I? Oh yeah. So Python, that data type is called str. That data type is called float. Yeah, I like the old Selectric keyboards. Those were really soft and cushy and good for fast typing. And then that data type is called INT. And we can find out what kind of type a piece of data is by using the type function. So I'm going to go back into my shell. I'm going to say n equals, this is a shell, not in the program. And my name is Bob. n equals quote Bob. And now I'm going to type in type, parentheses, in. It tells me it's a string. Sure enough. How about type, one, two, three? That is an int. Type, one, two, three, point zero. That's a float. Now there's a type that we haven't seen yet. It's not mentioned on the slide, but it's a Boolean, meaning true or false. If you've ever taken discrete math, you've probably done Boolean math. If you took fundamentals, you've seen true and false. So type, parentheses, and I'm going to capitalize the first letter of this because this language mandates that as part of the syntax. True with a capital T, and it says that's a bool. So it listed three data types. There's a fourth one, bool. So where I was coming up with a list of data types in my uh, notes, I may tack that one on. Scroll back up, scroll back up. So we had the string type. How do I mark this as uh, really, really important stuff? How about a couple of plus signs? And then the integer type, a couple of plus signs. The floating point type, a couple of plus signs. And then lastly, the bool type or boolean, which are true false values. I'm going to change that word, for example, to four main data types. That's type one. That's type two. Type three. You don't have to add all these, of course. You can always download the notes later. I'm really not expecting everybody to type in everything I do, but some people do. All right. So. There's also the idea of the empty string. The empty string is when you put no, nothing between quotes. Like if I do this, print, parentheses, quote, quote, double quote, double quote. Or print, parentheses, single quote, single quote. 
I suppose even print parentheses triple quote triple quote might do the same thing, but that'd be dumb. So it printed out two. They're not blank lines, really. Eh, they look like blank lines, but they're empty. There's nothing there. And that's okay. You can create an empty string and then start adding stuff to it. So I'm going to create a string just called ES or S. How about that? S is equal to quote, one, two, three. And now I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to concatenate something to it. No, wait. I said I was going to use an empty string. S equals quote, quote. And then S plus equals Fred, end quote. And then S plus equals Barney, end quote. And now let's print parentheses S. What we just did is we took an empty string and then we concatenated two more pieces of information to it. Now it's going to look dumb when we print it out. It's going to be Fred Barney with no space. All right, Fred Barney. But we could fix that, right? We can concatenate a comma on it. We could put a comma there. We could put a, you know, a comma here. We could concatenate that. I think I'm going to do that. S plus equals quote, comma, space, because that would make it pretty, end quote. And I think it's, yeah, yeah. So now when I print it out, it's going to say Fred, comma, Barney, like that. Very common thing to do. Create an empty piece of data and then start adding things to it. We'll see that with uh, numbers. We'll see that with lists. We're seeing it with string right here. Now, you create something, it's set to zero or empty, and then you start adding things to it, often in a loop. All right, so if I was going to print something out, and it needed to be multiple lines, there's a couple of ways I could do that. So let's say I wanted to print some lines from a Beatles song. Like, uh, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So print, parentheses, quote, she loves you, end quote, end parentheses. Then another print statement, print, yeah, end parentheses, excuse me, end quote, end parentheses, and I'm just going to copy that and paste it so it says, yeah, yeah, yeah. The last one's going to have an exclamation mark. That's one way to do it. There are other ways. We've seen two other ways, backslash ends and triple quotes. So print, parentheses, quote, she loves you. I don't mind putting a space before my backslash in if it makes it easy to read, but technically you don't need to. So she loves you, backslash, in. Yeah, backslash, in. Yeah, backslash, in. And one more, yeah, exclamation point. That's another way to do it. Now for a third way. Print, parentheses, quote, except we're going to do triple quotes. She loves you. And then on the next line, yeah, 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 exclamation mark, and then some more closing triple quotes, like that. All three of those do the same exact thing. Just different ways of manipulating the string output. Using the new line character, the slash in, using the multi-line string, or just calling print four times in a row. Now, I've been running my mouth and my fingers out for a while and not making sure that every that nobody has syntax errors, so I'm gonna stop. See how y'all are doing. And what else could you do? You could build the string and then print it out all at once. So, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to build a string and print it out all at once. I'm going to create an empty string. Song equals, quote, quote, and then I'm going to start adding to that. Song plus equals, she, whoops, where'd my quote go? Song plus equals, she loves you. How about we end it with a backslash n just to make it easy. 
and then song, so there was an end quote after that backslash in, song plus equals, yeah, backslash in, and then I'm going to repeat that a little bit, song plus equals, quote, yeah, backslash in, end quote, and then now for the final, yeah, song plus equals, quote, yeah, exclamation point. Now, I'm not going to bother putting a backslash in on this one because we don't need to go to a new line. The print statement goes to a new line automatically. All right, and then I'm going to print song as a single variable like that. Now we have four pieces of, uh, of work that does the same exact thing. So there's always more than one way to do something, and you just have to pick what you think is the most appropriate. Like, feet, like using backslash ends? Cool. Like building a string like that? Well, that can actually be useful. Like, what if you're creating a form letter? Right. You might say, dear, and then you stop there, and then you do plus equals, and you print out somebody's name. Right. Dear John. And then you have, you know, a block of text, a paragraph that you add to it. And then you have a signature and another name. So as long as two is not a, a, a keyword, two is equal to, quote, Fred. That's who we're sending this to. From is equal, whoops, from is a, a keyword. How about sender equals, quote, Barney. And then the paragraph. I'm just going to call it para equals your dang Dino ate my cat in the exclamation point end quote. Now we're going to build a string that has all that stuff in it. So text equals quote dear space end quote plus the two name right dear Fred plus quote backslash in end quote so to say dear Fred on one line now let's add the paragraph to it so we're going to do text plus equals para text plus equals para plus quote, backslash in. Now we're going to have one more line, which is the signature. Sincerely, comma, plus the sender. So, text plus equals, quote, sincerely, comma, space, end quote, plus sender. Kind of a form letter. Because we could change the sender, we could change the uh, to name, we could send the, change the paragraph, and then I'm going to print the text out like that. So, dear Fred, your dang Dino ain't my cat. Sincerely, Barney. So, that worked. So, we've seen several different ways of creating text. Text is important. The book said that it's the most important thing, that it's done more often in computer processing than anything else. We all good, or anybody else need to stuff on the screen a little bit longer? Okay. What did I say it was called when we have a plus or a plus equals and we're dealing with text? Special Latin word. Starts with a C. 
Yep, concatenation, exactly. To my brain, it's a pending, but we have to use fancy language, concatenation. You can use single quotes, uh, apostrophes, and double quotes interchangeably. You know, I could have put single quotes there. I don't tend to do that because in other languages, single quotes mean something very differently than double quotes. So here's our escape sequences. Backslash B, backspace. Well, that one doesn't even work in idle. It works if you run the script from the command prompt, but not in idle. But, you know, you could make it print out hello, and then you could print out five backslash Bs in a row, and it would supposedly erase them all. And why would you want to do that? Well, think back to the old days when you had this kind of printers that were exactly typewriters. You might type in an important word, and then you'd backspace and you'd underline it with those underlines, right? So, there's a escape sequence for it. Nobody uses it. Backslash N means new line. Backslash T means tab. Backslash backslash means the backslash character. And you go, what? Why would I want that? Well, here, I'll show you. Print, parentheses, quote, and let, let's pretend that we're making up a directory. So, C colon backslash new dir backslash temp dot txt right some file name some directory name does anybody see any problems when i print that out what's going to happen it's going to have a line break, it's going to have a line break right there yeah. so and then it's going to have a tab right there not going to be what we want at all you know what i want to do this is going to look silly but print down here at the bottom, tab down, uh, or, you know, hit enter a few times. And then print, like, 10 times, quote, backslash n. The only reason I'm doing that, and you don't have to do it, is my stuff is all winding up at the bottom of the screen where it's hard to see now. And so I'm going to just hit the, effectively hit the enter key, right? Push it all up. You don't have to do that. Okay, but see, there we printed it out. C colon, U der, U. And then emp.txt, not so good. To fix that, we use the double slash. Like that. So what that means is as it's processing it, C colon, backslash, oh, I'm about to do something fancy. Nope, fooled you. Just print out a slash, <laughs> new der, Backslash, okay, we're in fancy mode again. Nope, fooled you. Just print a slash, temp.txt. Uh, Same thing with double and single quotes. So for example, another print. Print parentheses, quote, my name is, quote, mud. End quote, end quote, end parentheses. Maybe you can tell just by looking at it that that's going to be a syntax error. Yep. So to fix that, I need to put backslashes in front of these because what's happening? It's treating, yeah, it's treating all of that as one string. And then we have the end of the string here. That's not going to work. So, but if we put a backslash in front of the quote and a backslash in front of the other one, it tells it that these are really not quotes that define a string. They're just characters that need to be printed out mm -hmm. just like any other. And single quote works the same way. We could use a backslash apostrophe to print out a single quote. So those are all escape sequences. Backslash, 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 single quote, backslash, double quote, tab, new line, forget backspace. So using a plus sign can join two or more strings together, which, got to give it a fancy Latin name, concatenation. 
So whenever we use that equal sign to stick a value into a variable, that's called assignment. So here, ah, there's not even examples here. You know, x equals 10, like that. We are assigning the value 10 into, into the variable x. Makes it easy to remember and use later in the program. You might not necessarily have to put something into a variable in order to use it. Give you an example. In uh, chemistry, there's a number that gets used over and over called the Avogadro's number, which you can memorize out to a certain number of decimal places. And so if you wanted to calculate the number of molecules in a so-called mole of water, it would look something like this. You know, um, let's say that molecules equals, and it's going to be 10 moles times 6.0233e to the 23, and we could print out the number of molecules there. And then later on, 20 pages down, we decide to do some other calculation. Something else. Molecules equals 20. We've got more moles of water. 6.0233. It's getting kind of annoying having to type this 6.0233 e to the 23 business. It would be better to store that in a variable. It would also be better to store that in a variable so that it's easy to read. And so that we could fill it in. We could ask the user how many moles we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called moles, and I'm going to stick a value in it. Moles equals 10. I have assigned a value into the variable. And then I'm just going to have a, that's good enough, have a Godress. I'm not going to write the whole word out. <laughs> equals 6.0233 exponent to the 23. And then I'm going to say molecules equals moles times avag or maybe avagnum or whatever. I want to make it easy to type, though, so I'm leaving it like that. It does the same thing, right? But we could use this variable over and over and over without having to type that. Makes it easy to use. And what if we need a more precise version of Avogadro's number? Maybe that's not precise enough. Maybe there's a more precise one. I'm going to go and look. I'm going to go to Google. Avogadro's number. Yeah, what do you know? It's a lot longer. 6.0221409. 6.0221409. I had it totally wrong. 6.0221409. And see, what if I'd made that mistake 100 times in the program? I would have to fix it each time. Whereas if I put it in a variable, I would only have to fix it once. 6.0221409. One four nine exponent twenty three. There we go. I'm happier now. Avogadro's is a constant. It's a numeric constant. It's a physical constant or something like that that scientists invented to make converting from the number, you know, the mass, the quantity of of matter to the number of molecules in it. That also means that we should not change it, and we should not use it for anything else later. Right? If later on I decide that AVAG, whatever that means, would make a great variable name to hold Fred, I shouldn't be able to do that. Because then if I tried to do that calculation again, moles times Avogadro's number, it would break. wouldn't work anymore. So I should not be able to do that. I should be able to define that as a constant. This language does not have the ability to find constants the way that Java and C++ and a bunch of other languages do. So what we do, and when I say we, this is a recommended practice. This is kind of a gentleman and a gentlewoman's agreement that if we ever make a variable name that's all uppercase, it means do not change it later in the program. So I need to change both places, though, right? If I change it here, I have to change it here. I'm getting really tired of looking at just AVAG. So AVAG God Dros underscore number. I probably got that wrong. <laughs> and then I'm going to copy that and paste it. There we go. I'm pretty sure I got that wrong, but 
There we go. That's a good variable name. It says exactly what it is. Avogadadadadros. I'm sure that I misspelled that. But it indicates that it's supposed to be a constant. It's not supposed to change. You know, later on, if I ask, if I uh, think that I can reuse that variable name for some other purpose, the fact that it's in all caps tells me I better not. So, like, you could put a tax rate in there, or you could put the speed of light in there, or, you know, the amount of acceler maximum amount of acceleration of your object, or something. Something that is supposed to be hard-coded. The hard-coded means written in there as a constant and not changed. The uh, number of lines of your output file. You might make that a capital named variable because you're not supposed to reuse that later, right? If I say num lines is equal to 10 because I want my output to be 10 lines long, eh, I don't really know what that means when I'm 100 pages down in the code. But if I see num lines equals 10, that's implying that this is a very important number. It's in a very important number, and I better not change its value, or else the program will no longer work. Hope that makes sense. To a which statement? statement? Not a global statement, but it would be the same as in the languages that support it, putting the word const or don't type this guys because it wouldn't work, or final if it, that's the syntax of the language. Global's a little bit different, and we will get to global, but okay. a global and a constant are, are fairly different things. <clears throat> Very good question. So, names can consist of any number of letters or digits or underscores. However, they cannot start with a digit. This is illegal. I cannot do 1993 underscore budget, or just 1993 budget. That's illegal. Bad variable name. But I can do budget 1993. That's a good variable name. So variable names can have letters, digits, and underscores, but cannot start with a digit. Variables are case sensitive, and I see that all the time where somebody will type in weight equals 30, and then they'll do print weight like that. Well, this is not the English language. We do not have to capitalize the first letter of a sentence. If you put a capital W there, you better put a capital W there. I'm going to comment this stuff out because it would not work. Error. Both must be capitalized the same way. Programmers use all uppercase letters to, for so-called symbolic constants. Those are values that the program never changes, nor should they change. Maximum numbers of, of uh, players on the screen might be a, num a symbolic constant. Tax underscore rate. Standard underscore deduction. You'll see the use of the underscore in, in symbolic constants just to make it easier to read. So variables serve two purposes. Help the programmer keep track of data that changes over time and allows the programmer to refer to a complex piece of information with a simple name. I might create one variable that contains all the information that I have about a person. It contains their first name, their last name, their birth date, and their address. Well, we don't know how to create one variable that has all that information yet. But we will learn as time goes by. It's called creating a class. We know what program comments are. I'm not going to spend much time on this anymore. That's a multi-line comment. A single-line comment is just a hash. They're calling that an end-of-line comment rather than a single-line comment. And that's true. 
right? I could put a comment here. Define a constant like that. There, it's an end of line comment. So, a hash marks an end of line comment and triple quotes can be used to create a multi-line comment. I said I was going to talk about modulus. We're going to talk about it again. I think we've done or talked about conversion problems where, like, you're converting pounds to, to kilograms or something like that. What if you have something a little bit different? Like, you have the number of ounces and you want to convert it to pounds and ounces. So you don't want to just divide by 16, right? Because if you have 30 pounds, you don't want to say that that's equal to 1.98 Excuse me, if you have 30 ounces, you don't want to say that it's equal to 1.98 pounds. You want to say that it's 1 pound and 14 ounces, or whatever it is. I may have gotten that wrong, but I believe that there are 16 pounds in an ounce. And so, we're going to do this. OZ, shortcut for ounces, or maybe just the whole word. Ounces equals 100. We just bought 100 ounces of something, and we want to find out how many pounds in ounces that is. So pounds equals 100 divided by 16, but not divided by, floor divi division. So divide by round down. Then we want the remainder. The remainder is the modulus. So OZ, short for ounces, equals 100 modulus 16. Okay, now I, I made a dummy mistake. If I have a variable called ounces that contains 100, I, I should have used that there, and I should have used that there. So, Because what if we wanted the user to be able to type in a different number? So I'm going to copy that word ounces and make it ounces floor division 16 and ounces modulus 16. Makes it behave the same way, right? But what if I wanted to change that to 80? I don't want to have to change it in three places. I just want to use it, change it once. So let's print something out. Print parentheses quote percent f ounces equals percent f pounds percent f ounces end quote comma and I'm going to put this on the next line but it's not necessary to do so I think you can use a backslash to indicate that you can go to the next line And so, and you don't even have to do that. So I, I deleted the backslash. I'm going to delete this comma. The syntax for creating a formatted print statement like I am is to use some percent signs in the middle, right? These are placeholders. And then after the quote, we're going to create a list of the variables that fill in those placeholders. And that list goes inside a pair of parentheses. And then there would be one final parentheses to close this open one. And then in here is where I need to print it out. Ounces, comma, pounds, comma, OZ. Like that. Oh, and you see this 10 times backslash in? I'm going to push that back down to the bottom of mine. You, know, you never even had to do that in the first place, but I like having it at the end of the program so that it scrolls the text up so that the people in the back of the room can see it. All right, it says that 80 ounces equals 5 pounds, 0 ounces. How about 80? How about 100 ounces? Let's find out. Because that came out a nice round number, and I don't want to see nice round numbers. I want to see it work. 100 ounces equals 6 pounds, 4 ounces. Sounds right. That is right, right? 1 pound in ounces. 16, okay. We need to about slow down and talk about homework. But you see what I did? I used floor division to get one unit, and then I got, I used modulus to get another one. 
And if this one doesn't make sense, that's okay. Did you notice when I printed that out, it printed out too many zeros? I may not want that many zeros. I can fix that by putting something after the percent sign. I can say percent dot two f. That dot two means two places after the decimal point. And I'm going to do that here. Percent dot two f and percent dot two f there. Now when I run it, there. Doesn't have so many ridiculous numbers of zeros. I'll be using formatted print statements a lot more as we go along so you'll get plenty of chances to pick it up if you don't already have it. Uh-huh. Right. Exactly. I could change it to dot zero if I wanted to and it wouldn't print out any zeros at all. Very good. Or maybe just one, right? One decimal place. Could change them to one. One more example of using uh, floor division and modulus. What if we find a pile of pennies on the floor and we have 923 pennies? So pennies equals 923. Now I want to calculate how many dollars and cents that is. Dollars equals pennies floor division 100, right? Because there's 100 pennies and a dollar. But that was supposed to be floor division and I only put a single slash so I need to correct that. Double slash. And then cents equals pennies modulus 100. So after this was done, what is 923 floor divided by 100? Come on, guys. What's 923 divided by 100? And then round it down. It's 9, right? And then what was left over? 23. So this is going to equal 9 at that point, and this is going to equal 23 at that point. So we did some conversion. Now, when I'm asking you to convert pounds to kilograms or stuff like that, I don't care if you do this kind of stuff. I can't even really see how it would apply. I would make it very clear that I want you to, you know, do this kind of calculation. So you're not going to have to like permanently memorize and I'm not going to sign homework that does this, but I did want you to see it in action. Well, why would you use modulation? Here's an example. All right, anybody need eyeballs on the screen because I've gone too far without helping? Nobody's waving hands? You are? All right. Thank you. All right, after Thursday, I may have another lecture that I want you all to watch. I didn't get to, uh, to queue up an extra lecture that I gave the other class because I was absent on Thursday. And by the way, I am late on grading some homework, and I apologize for that. I could tell you what's going on in my life, which is that a family member has a spinal cord injury and has subsequently slipped into something that looks like full-scale early dementia, 
and so it's requiring a lot of trips to the hospital in order to work it out and I, I should not let that affect my grading but unfortunately I have so I will catch that up quickly so let's see here where am I going I'm going all right all right anything you've turned in so far I'm gonna give you an automatic hundred for just because it's late my I'm late but if it's wrong, I'm going to still give you a comment about why it was wrong, right? That's the wrong class. So here's our homework. Part A, write a script that will print out a verse from a song or a poem or a speech or whatever you wanted to say. Sans, that spans multiple lines, like four lines of text. And you don't have to go nuts and put all 8,000 lines of Eminem's rap god, right? You know, just, just pick like four lines, a limerick or something, you know, it doesn't matter. I have a question about multiple lines. I'm sorry, pardon me? Yeah, I'll go back and show you in the notes where we just did that, okay? Okay, and, and, we'll, and I'll do a little bit of a review. So, I want you to do it two ways. Multiple print statements, one per line, or a single print statement with a multi-line string. If you feel like going crazy and doing the backslash ends as well, you can do it three ways. And in part B, I want you to print out your whole name with each word separated by tabs and then print out your whole name with each word separated by new lines. So really, for a lot of y'all, this is going to be a very short assignment, and you'll get it done in 10 minutes. So I should have had more homework, more rigorous homework queued up for y'all, and I apologize. So printing out the multiple line stuff. You're saying, that's okay. <laughs> Pardon? Correct, you will. You will very soon. So here's what I meant by multiple lines, right? It's back when we were doing the She Loves You stuff. Here we're printing out some song lyrics, one line per print statement. And here we're printing out some song lyrics using one print statement but a multi-line string. I just had a, a question. You said you wanted four lines. I was wondering if I'm trying to like, well, if I'm trying to like, find out four lines. I don't want four diff. I don't want the four lines repeated the same times, right? If you're going to print out a limerick, just, you know, there once was a blah, 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 blah. In that case, like, she loves you, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you just type in one thing to print out the yeah? You could, right. You could do that. Like, what's that Donna Summer song or something? Love to love you, baby. And she says that 100,000 times. I guess you could do, you know, one line and then print out 100,000. Yeah. However you want to structure, it's fine. I'm I'm not... This one wound up being yeah, 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 just because it was easy to type, not because I want you to write a lyric that has the same word three times in a row. That makes sense? We're good? All right. Yeah, that homework assignment will very quickly be created. And are there any questions? This was C, I believe. So let me make a Dropbox for you and...